Yeah, yeah. Remember how the wave theory could not explain the photoelectric effect? Oh, yes. The water didn't boil when it was supposed to boil, but boiled when it was not supposed to boil. What would you do, yeah, if you were a physicist? I would check the fire. Something is wrong with the fire. So clever. What did the physicist do? I don't know. I think they were busy checking the kettle. Let's recap the three things that troubled the wave theory. Say you are using a low frequency wave and you are not getting any photoelectrons. If you keep on increasing the amplitude of the wave, you expect to eventually get those photoelectrons. But you didn't. So you switch to a higher frequency wave and finally got your photoelectrons. If you increase the amplitude of the wave, you expect the photoelectrons to become more energetic. But they didn't. If you reduce the amplitude of the wave until it's very small, then it should take a long... Alamak! How did that one come out so soon? Photoelectric effect didn't make any sense until Einstein came along. Einstein thought, we can't solve new problems using the old thinking that created them. So Einstein went ahead and asked the question, what if there's no wave at all? What if light doesn't deliver energy continuously like waves do, but in lumps like particles do? Einstein called his light particles photons and proposed E is equal to HF, that each photon carries energy equals to Planck's constant times the light frequency. Suddenly, photoelectric effect makes sense. Have you figured it out? Threshold frequency is the frequency when energy of the photon HF is equal to the work function. Below the threshold frequency, none of the photons has enough energy to help the electron overcome the work function. Increasing the light intensity doesn't help because it only brings more useless photons per unit time. The only way to knock an electron out in one single punch is to increase the light frequency until the energy of the photon is more than the work function. Since it's a simple energy transaction of one electron with one photon, the maximum kinetic energy of a photoelectron must be equal to the photon energy minus the work function. So the only way to increase the kinetic energy of photoelectrons is to pack more energy into each photon so that we land a bigger punch on each electron. And the only way to increase the energy of the photon is to increase the light frequency. Photoelectric effect is instantaneous because the electrons don't have to accumulate energy over time. The energy comes pre-packed for the lucky one to grab and take off immediately. By changing our idea of how light delivers energy to the electrons, photoelectric effect is a different ball game. Under the wave theory, energy is distributed evenly to all the electrons, shaking them and warming them up continuously. Under the photon theory, energy is delivered privately between one photon and one electron. The electrons which are lucky enough to be struck by the photons get to keep all the energy in that photon. And E goes to HF. The higher the light frequency, the larger the energy packet. So Einstein has found an elegant solution to the puzzles of photoelectric effect. Before photoelectric effect, physicists were convinced that light could be fully described by a wave. Unfortunately, the photoelectric effect was impossible to understand in terms of the classical wave description of light. A particle nature of light is necessary. Papa, I think I get it. Photoelectric effect is nothing like boiling water with fire. Photoelectric effect is more like throwing balls at bowling pins. 1,000 ping pong balls may carry the same energy as one bowling ball, but 1,000 ping pong balls can never, ever knock the pin down like one bowling ball does in one instant. We need bigger balls.